Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. I hope my voice is coming and good and from your side. Uh, I just came actually uh, from an outdoor trip and uh, it was a very good day and uh, we were able to have a good time. Uh, I receive a question uh, about what is written in Korah and I believe I spoke before about the same issue uh, which is written supposedly here. Uh, is Islam the only true religion? You know, uh, everybody in the world believe, anyone who believe in any religion, he believe that his religion is the only true religion. And that's very normal. I mean, everybody, uh, you believe in that religion supposedly because you think it is a true religion. So this is very normal, nothing new here. But what is new about Islam? That Muslims, they give you answers, have nothing to do with Islam. And when you read it, you wonder if this is written uh, to give an answer or to lie and deceive. So here, if you go down, you will see the answer for this. Because if you say only one book, only one book, the Quran. Is that true? If I say 90% of Islam is not in the Quran, I'm not exaggerating, if not more. So what only one book? What is then Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim and Abu At-Turmudi? And by the way, when we say Sahih Bukhari, we are talking about books of Al-Bukhari, books of Sahih Muslim, books of At-Turmudi, books of uh, Ibn Dawood, books, 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 and those are the most famous books, but the fact we have tons, thousands of books considered as a, a source of Islam. So how the Muslims, they fool us and they say we have only the Quran. That's absolutely a big fat lie. If we go right now, this just to show you, in the Quran, it says nothing about rape, not a single verse. So where we can find the punishment of rape? Have you ever heard about the perfect law? Imagine there's a country, and this country have a law, and this law never spoke about what the punishment of rape. So what we will do? The Muslim, they will say to you, oh, we have to go and search in different books. So what you say to us, Al-Quran is the only book or we have only one book. Secondly, which Quran? Muslims have many Qurans. They lie to us, they say we have one Quran. According to Muhammad himself, not according to me. Muhammad himself, he agreed that he asked Allah to send him the Quran as seven books. So according to Muhammad, there is seven Quran. If you read with me here, let us change to our Arabic. You will see that Muhammad claiming that he asked his God to send the Quran in seven languages. And the languages here is seven Arabic languages because, you know, Arab, as I said before, they are not one ethnic group. You know, it's a language mixed with many languages. This is why, like, if I try to understand somebody, I don't want to say me, and let's say uh, you learn Arabic, and you try to listen to somebody from Saudi Arabia, you won't understand what he's saying. If somebody from Morocco want to speak to you, you won't understand what he's saying. If somebody, actually me myself, if I speak to somebody from Morocco, I will not be able to accomplish anything in this conversation. Same from Tunisia. So what Arabic they are talking about? Simply, it's a mix of languages. Even the Arabic of the Arab is not Arabic, which means it is a complex of languages. They make together a new language. So here you will see Muhammad saying that Allah, he asked Allah. And he asked Allah to send him the Quran in seven books. In other ways, even recitation, because remember, the Quran never been given as a book. So the number one lie the Muslims they say to us that they have a book when they never have a book. And actually, until now, they don't have a book. 
The most famous Quran is the Quran of Uthman, but nobody have it. The Muslims claim that the Quran is printed today by Saudi Arabia, which is the most famous copy, for it is published by the Saudi for free and because of the money of the oil. So they were able to subdue that copy or this copy over the others. Uh, even this copy have no original. Even the copy which the Muslims they have in their hand, it says that this book is according to, according to, according to, according to, according to, according to, according to Uthman. And this is according to the recitation of Hafs. And we explained before that Hafs is a proven by Muslim Sunni that he is a liar and he is a fraud. So even the Quran they have today in their hand is not an original Quran and is according to many. And the last one they get it from, which means his recitation, not his writing. Remember, we are talking about recitation. So 200 years after Muhammad, we have the Quran according to Muslims. It is according to the recitation of Hafs, not writing. So there's no Uthman book. It was a recitation from a guy, his name is Hafs, exists 200 years after Muhammad, and he was accused by all Muslims, with no exception, that he is a fraud. Here in front of us, you will see that Muhammad uh, saying something very important. And I want people here to save their, this reference, for this is proof to us that Islam cannot be what Muslims claim. Uh, Muhammad, he said, Jibreel come to him and said, <clears throat> Allah has commanded you to recite your, to your people the Quran in one dialect. Remember, I'm reading the Muslim translation. Upon this, he said, I ask from Allah burden and forgiveness. My people are and not capable of doing it. Okay, hold on. Muhammad here, he said, Muhammad, not me, Muslims. Don't tell me I'm lying. Don't tell me I'm being stupid. It's your prophet saying that one Quran is not enough for they are not capable of doing it. Doing what? If there's any Muslim in the bushes there, please, guys, don't forget to uh, invite your friends. Share the link. Uh, because I did not really, I'm not posting in Facebook, uh, you know, people come by themselves, so help us to share the links uh, so people will know that we are on air. So when Muhammad he said, my people are not capable of doing it, and remember here, Muhammad is speaking to who? To Allah. So this conversation is between Muhammad and the angel Jibreel, which is the middleman between Muhammad and Allah. Jibreel here is the pizza delivery guy. So Jibreel came to Muhammad and he told him, Allah ordered you to recite the Quran in one dialect. Muhammad said, not me, remember, my people are not capable of doing it. Okay. Do you Muslims have now seven Quran or have one? I will go back to the answer made by Muslims. Be careful with me. Only one book, it's called the Quran. <laughs> So they lie to us from the beginning because even the Quran is not one book. And according to Muhammad, one book is not enough. According to Muhammad, don't tell me now it's enough. Guys, are, are you getting my point? Because Abdul, he will say to you, oh, it's enough. It's the same, brother. It's the same. It's just dialect. It's the same, brother. You know, if it is not the same, it's the same. And it's just a dialect. So why your prophet saying they are not capable of doing it? Is he stupid? Are you saying to me, Muslims? That your prophet is a stupid idiot. He do not know what he's talking about, and you know better than him. And not only Muhammad, he don't you know he don't like it. Even Allah agree with him. Read carefully. He said to him, "I ask from Allah forgiveness, burden of forgiveness. My people are not capable of doing it." He then, which means the angel Jibreel, came for him the second time and said, "Allah has commanded you that you should recite the Quran to your people in two dialect." Oh, oh here we go. We have a story. So even Allah is corrected by Muhammad. Allah is a stupid God. He thought that the Quran, one Quran is enough. And the proof of that, read with me carefully. Allah has commanded you to recite to your people the Quran in one dialect. Okay. The Muslim, they say to us that Allah is a true God. And if he, and he says, if he says something, B is going to be. Okay. What's wrong with this God? Don't he knew that one dialect 
the people of Muhammad are not capable of doing it? Have you ever heard of a man correcting God? Guys, are you following me? Have you ever heard of a man correcting God and telling him, hello, what's wrong with you? My people are not capable of doing it. So Allah here, he have to read decision, rethink about it, and take a decision to correct the first decision. And from one recitation, Allah agreed to make it two. All right. So here, he came to him again second time, and he said, Allah has commanded you to should recite the Quran in to your people in two dialects. Then the story, you know, continue. Upon this, the holy prophet, the holy, huh? take note by, by the holy. Upon this, he, the holy prophet, again said, I seek burden and the forgiveness from Allah. My people would not be able to do so. So take a note. Even if you have two Quran today, you are not capable of doing it. So don't strip it. Don't be stupid and tell me, no, we are capable because either you or your prophet is the donkey here. Either your prophet, he do not know what he's talking about, and you are not capable, and you agree with him, or you don't agree with your prophet, and you then you say that Muhammad is a stupid idiot, he do not know what he's talking about, and the Quran we have today is enough. Guys, are you getting the point? Are we, are we learning the idea here? This is alone is enough to destroy all what they claim about Islam. Because in this statement here, in this story, which is Sahih, hold on, a Muslim Abdul, he might say to you, this is weak. This is Sahih Muslim. We can show you the same story from many, and it is Sahih. So don't play the game of Sahih and weak and vitamin A and B and D and C. So here we have a problem. Number one, Allah is a stupid, Muhammad is a smart. Number two, Muhammad the man correcting Allah the God. Number three, Allah agree with Muhammad, not Muhammad agree with Allah. Number four, Allah is a joke. Why? Read with me carefully. First time, Allah, he said to him one dialect. Muhammad don't agree. My people are not capable. Allah, he sent him say, okay, 10 dialect. Muhammad, he repeat the same story for this stupid God who is stubborn. He is not listening. He said to him, I seek burden and forgiveness from Allah. My people will not be able to do it. Oh, so, yeah, come on. I told you they are not. He, Jibreel, came the third time. And he said, Allah has commanded you to recite the Quran to your people. Three dialects. Like, what the heck? Who is the donkey here? First time I read this story, I said to myself, let me ask the guy next to me, and he was a student with me in the school. I told him, do you see something wrong here? He said, no. I said, are you sure? He said, no. Are you sure? He said, no, and I know you are a Christian, and you will try to fabricate things. I said, I'm not going to fabricate anything. The story here is saying that Muhammad was correcting Allah. He said, no, it doesn't say that. I said, no, it says that. Allah, he think one recitation is enough. Muhammad, he tell him no. And the funny about the story here, guys, that why Muhammad from the first conversation said to him seven? I mean, what this topic is about here. The angel Jibreel, he go to Allah, come back from Allah. Allah say to him two. Muhammad, he say no. He came back to him, he said three. Muhammad, he said no. Uh, uh, he came back number four, he said to him four. He said, Muhammad, he said no. He came back number five, he uh, no, uh, said to him, okay, five. He said to him, no. He came back number six and you know, he said, okay, let us do it six. He said no. And then at the seven, Muhammad agreed. Why Muhammad don't say we need seven? You know what I'm saying? Who is the stupid here in this story? I mean, what this is for? We are talking about God Almighty, and we are talking about a bazaar here, or like it's like a two guys, two idiot in the in the in the bazaar, and they are talking about something they will do anyway, but they don't. They are not, not clear. The first guy he is not clear about his product, how much price he want. 
this is a, this is a, like a, a negotiation about something cannot cannot be acceptable because if God said one book is enough is one book is enough Allah said to you recite the Quran in one dialect that's it don't Allah knows that one dialect is enough or not enough and how come Muhammad he knew that it is not enough how come in this game Muhammad is this excuse my language Muhammad is the smart ass and Allah is the stupid ass nobody want to use his brain so when the Muslims speak to us about one book you don't have even one book and according to Muhammad you should have seven books and then and only then you are capable of doing it where is the seven books where we can find them your book one book you don't have but I think most of you you know what is behind this story Muhammad is a liar and he wanted to cover his ass because each time he speak he say a lie he cannot repeat the same lie twice correctly like now I just said okay we I was I was uh, outside in, in the, our door trip after five minutes I will say to you I was in the movie well, outdoor is not in the movie he cannot repeat the, the lie twice correctly you know because he's a liar he's fabricating things so Muhammad what he did in order to cover his lies he said Allah he sent me the Quran in seven dialect or seven ways of recitation what seven ways of recitation I mean he changed words as simple as that so now if somebody said to him oh you said it differently yesterday you said that differently Muhammad he would say oh did not I tell you that Allah he sent me the Quran in seven ways actually there's a story in the hadith about two guys two Muslims were reciting the Quran in two different ways and they fought about it he said this is not how the Prophet said it the other one he said no this is how the Prophet said it the, the other guy he said no I know how he said it so then they, 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 they took them to the Prophet and the Prophet he said okay you recite and then said told the other guy you recite both they recite and Muhammad he said oh, okay you know what both of you are correct huh why then Muhammad he said because Allah he made the Quran in seven days this is why the Muslim they were fighting together because they never heard Muhammad saying that the Quran sent in seven days like until that moment so because he is a liar he needed such a story such a false story let me ask the Muslims why Jesus Allah did not give him seven gospel hmm? why why Allah did not give Abraham seven books Moses you see, remember the Muslim, they say all those are prophets, including Adam. Why only Muhammad and the people of Muhammad, they need seven books and able to do, to, to be capable of doing it. Why they are so slow? I agree. So the Quran, compared to what is written in front of us, is a joke. And here that will raise for us a very important question. What kind of God he need to change his words to fit with dialect in order for people who speak the same language to understand? Additional to that. Now Allah, he sent the Quran to Muhammad according to the hadith here in seven dialect. Well, the Muslims still don't understand the Quran. <laughs> So when Muhammad he said they are not capable of doing it, he meant what? He meant not capable of do reciting or understanding, obviously both. Because if recitation is what is meant, it's very stupid to say they are not capable. As you see, people they are from backstand, they are reciting the Quran. Or what you need to do, force kids to repeat the same words, like 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 a recording machine without knowing even Arabic. They write the Quran for them in their own language, in letters like Urdu or etc. 
and then they read the Quran. I, like, like now I can write for you the Quran in, in, in English letters. All what I need is just use English letters to write Arabic words, and then when you read it, it sounds like you are reading Arabic, but the fact you are not. So what this is mean, they are not capable to do it. It's just a it's just a cover for a lie. For Muhammad is a liar, he's a scammer. Same time, we have additional additional proof that Muhammad is fabricating and he is lying and making up Quran. If you go in the Quran, you will find the following. And we spoke about this one before. To read with me here carefully, you will see the verse saying, مَا نَنْسَخُ مِنْ آيَةٍ أَوْ نُنْسِهَا نَأْتِي بِخَيْرٍ مِنْهَا أَوْ مِثْلِهَا Okay, what does that mean? Translation. And when you read the translation, you will see how stupid this Quran is and what a mad, crazy religion this religion is. According to Muhammad, Allah said, None of our revelation do we abrogate or cause to be forgotten. Why in the world God, he sent revelation and he caused you to forget the for revelation? Isn't it, this is a contradiction for the Quran where it says that the Quran is reserved? Because if you forget the Quran, you are not reserving the Quran. If you ask a Muslim how you reserve the Quran, they say it's kept in our chest. In our heart, we recite it. The Quran says, the Quran, that Allah caused you to forget the Quran. A Muslim Abdul, he says, he might say to you, because he's a smart, uh, 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 you know, Abdul, he, he said, oh, no, no, he's talking about abrogate. No, this is not about abrogate. This verse is speaking about two things. Abrogation is number one, or, this is a different case, cause to be forgotten. So don't mix between them. Abrogation is not cause to be forgotten. It's two different things. And here, Muhammad, he made this verse because the Arab, they start making fun of him. Muhammad, he don't remember what he said twice. Muhammad, he gave something in the morning as order. He changed it at night. So now Muhammad, he need to cover his problem. He's exposed. So he said, nothing of our revelation, we abrogate all cause to be forgotten. So Muhammad here claimed that Allah caused him to forget the Quran. How that can be? And why? If the Prophet himself is forgetting the Quran, what about the rest? The more you read, uh, by the way, guys, those who they are saying hi, hello, etc., so forgive me. Uh, I'm using I'm using the phone uh, to view the chat, and the text is so small, uh, and I cannot, you know, like. Uh, so forgive me if I didn't say hi back. So uh, you have to repeat hello seven times until I see it. The same as what happened to Muhammad. My people are not capable of doing it. <laughs> so. Here we have many problems in this story, proving that everything the Muslims they claim is a false and fiction and is stupid. You don't have one book, and supposedly you should have seven. And from the seven, we don't even have one. And now, ask yourself, if the Muslims say that the Quran is only enough for us, then what this hadith is about? Where is the rules of Islam can be found? There's tons of rules abrogated by the hadith. You can go right now and search for verses in the Quran abrogated by hadith. You will not believe it. A hadith abrogating the word of God. Hadith, for those who do not know, it's an Arabic word meaning speech. Speech of who? Muhammad and his friends. As simple as that. Actually, the Quran itself is a hadith. And supposedly, it is the best of the hadith. It is the best of the hadith. 
Here we go. Allah nazzala ahsan al-hadithi kitaban mutashabihan mathani taqsha'arru, etc. Let's check out the statement. If you read actually this verse, you will see how funny it is. Allah sent down the best of the hadith. Best of hadith. So even the Quran is a hadith. According to the Quran, no Muslim should or allowed to re record the Quran or let us say to document the Quran, to write it down. Why? Because the Quran says, Inna alayna jama'uhu wa Qur'anahu. Jama'uhu. Let us see. Inna alayna jama'uhu wa Qur'anahu. Chapter 75, verse number 17. What does that mean? Simply, Allah saying, it is on me, Allah, the recitation of the Quran and to collect the Quran, which means to make it a book. But Allah never did any. Do you see? It is for us to collect it and to recite it. Okay. So why Muslims collect the Quran? How this happened? And this is why you will notice that until the time of Muhammad life, no Quran. Uthman ibn Affan and others, they start doing some, let us say, research or writing. But why there's no Quran of Muhammad? Because simply Muhammad, he told them, it is on us to collect it and to proclaim it. Who is the one who's talking Allah? So he told them, this, no, no, this is none of your business. Allah will collect it. The reason Muhammad, he said that, because he don't want people to write down what he say, because that can get him busted. For he, as we showed you in different verse, he keep forgetting Quran, and he make and he make a statement full of mistakes, contradict other mistakes he made before. And this is why he needed to create such a lie here saying, that my people are not capable of doing it. And then Allah, he upgrade and he says, okay, two versions of the Quran, three versions of the Quran, four versions, five versions, etc. But who in the world want to believe in such a garbage story? You negotiate with God. This is remind me of the same story of Muhammad negotiating with God, how many times to pray. If you remember the story where Muhammad uh, he asked Allah to give him discount in the number of the prayer. How in the world anyone can believe in such a funny, stupid story? Let us see. And the story is very simple, as you see in the front of you. Muhammad, when he went to the seven heaven, eleven, seven, eleven heaven in, in, in Allah heaven, he went to the bedroom of Allah, but he never spoke to Allah. It doesn't say really how he received those 50 prayer order. It says here that Allah the Almighty enjoyed 50 prayer upon his my ummah so allah he told him how he did that we don't know maybe he told jibreel as usual so he told him pray 50 times okay and i came back with that until i passed by musas how muhammad passed by musas i i would be happy to hear from the muslim to tell me how in the world this happened musas is dead according to islam the first prophet will be resurrected from death in the resurrection day is going to be Muhammad. So Moses and Adam, etc., except Jesus, uh, uh, you know, Jesus is still alive until now. All the prophets are dead. And this is what the Quran confirmed. You know, the Quran confirmed that all messengers are dead. It says that Muhammad is nothing but a messenger and all the messengers before him pass away. Some stupid translation tried to cover the ass of Muhammad with his mistakes, 
and they say most of messengers they pass away. And doesn't doesn't say that وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ الرَّسُولُ and Muhammad is none but nothing but a messenger. All messengers before him die. And here in the same verse, by the way, you will see the Quran saying something very funny, proving to us Islam to be false again. It says, so if he die or get killed, why Allah do not know if Muhammad will die or get killed? Muhammad, he made it this way because he was not sure how he will die. He killed many people. He had many enemies. So he was expecting death in any way, poison, killing, etc., slaughter, you never know. So Muhammad is not, is, is, is a, a, but a messenger. And all messenger before him die. You see the translation here is right, is a lie. Will be that when he dieth or slain, though dieth of how Allah he says dieth or slain. Allah is guessing. No, it was Muhammad, he did not know what to say. If he say if he is he is he die, uh, and then he 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 got killed, that will expose him. If he say if he's slain and then he die normally, so like you know it's like a, it's going to be a problem. One of them have to be true. So Muhammad he have to make it this way in order to cover himself as a false prophet. And here we have, you know, like additional problem to this. All messengers before Muhammad die. So what the story of Jesus about that the Muslims believe that he is up in heaven and he's alive. How that can be? How the Quran says that all messengers are dead. All the messengers before Muhammad with no exception. And look what he says. Messengers have passed away before him. Doesn't say that it says قد خلت من قبله. قد خلت, it is a stihaq, it's something happened and it's already done. Messengers, the messengers, with no exception, they die before him. So he's going to die too. So where is Jesus here? And I believe this is story here, this verse is written after Muhammad death. Because this is something happened when Muhammad, when people, they heard that Muhammad, he died, people, they start leaving Islam. So either here Muhammad prophesying that he is when he died, people will leave Islam because he forced them to, to convert to Islam. And this, this is additional again, will prove that he's a false prophet because why people are forced into Islam and call them Muslims if they will leave Islam the second they leave, they, they hear that you are dead. If we go back here in the story about uh, Musa's, <coughs> until I pass by Musa's, so Allah delivered him 50 prayer, he passed by Musa's, and then he said to him, what your Lord enjoined upon you, your Ummah. Ummah, the word Ummah mean nation, stupid translation. I mean, they translate everything in English, and now Ummah, you leave it in Arabic, donkeys. I said, he has enjoyed 50 prayer on, on them. Okay, hold on. And who is the donkey here? Muhammad or Allah? How in the world God he gave people to pray 50, 50 prayer a day? Every prayer for Muslims, it, it take them at least 20 minutes to prepare yourself, do ablution, go, and the Muslims gather, blah 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 blah, you know, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, and then at least 20 minutes. So if we, if we pray 50 time and um, X 20 minutes, we, we will not have enough hours. You know what I mean? What is that? Why Allah he gave him 50 prayer? It's a joke. Then Musa, he told Muhammad, he told him what? Allah told him 50 prayer. So look what Musa said to him, go back to your Lord. The mighty, the supreme uh, for, for your ummah, your nation will not be able to do so. And here you'll notice something very funny about the word unable to do it. Moses here is correcting Allah. We showed you the hadith before where Muhammad is correcting Allah that one Quran is not enough. Allah want to give one Quran only. Allah command you to read one Quran. Here in this story, Muhammad is a smart ass. He correct Allah. 
he said to him I seek forgiveness and I don't want to be disobedient but this is impossible my people are not capable of doing it in the other hadith Musa is correcting the stupid Allah and the stupid Muhammad for sure I believe this is good can be true because Musa is a Jew I mean Jew you know they calculate right away so Musa said to me go back to your Lord for your nation will not be able to to do so not to do that uh, so Musa said to him, Habibi Muhammad, Habibi, Habibi, what's wrong with you, Muhammad? Muhammad, Allah told you to pray 50 prayer? Are you stupid, Muhammad? You can pray 50 prayer. How many hours in the day? And Musa get the calculator of a Jew and he start calculating 50 prayer, extra day. Muhammad, you want to be able to see Muhammad, how people can pray 50 prayer? So Muhammad, he went back to Allah. So I went back to my Lord as if you are going to a bazaar, a clinic office. I mean, what kind of religion is religion? Muhammad, he went back to Allah. And why you went back? I mean, what, what does that mean? Went back. What, what, what does that mean exactly? Went back where? Muhammad is going up, down, up, down to heaven and Musa is waiting for him. So I went back to my Lord, the mighty and etc. And he reduced the portion for it. What he reduced? What the heck? Allah, he agree. Musa is smart as Muhammad is an idiot, and Allah is an idiot. So here, then I came back to Musa, and I told him. He said, "Go back to your Lord." What? What? And here you will see they don't give us the number because there's a story, many stories. You know, some they say Allah, he make it forty-five. And then he went back, and Moses told him, "No, go back." He made it forty. Then we go back. He made it forty, uh, 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 thirty-five. Go back, and then he went. It became thirty, and the thirty became twenty-five, and twenty-five became twenty, and twenty became uh, uh, fifteen, and fifteen became ten, and then the ten became five. Okay, we we can find this verse in the Quran about five prayer, which was fifty. And what a stupid religion! What is this? Moses is correcting God. And what Moses is doing there? Moses is dead. What if Moses was not there at that moment? Muslims, they will be praying 50 prayer now. So when you read a Muslim article, right away, put in your head that 99.99999 of the word written in the article is a fabrication. And the only one is a true is the one is saying, I don't know. This is the one I left of the 9999.9. Muhammad is the, the revelation is the only ethnicity in Arabic. What is that? Hold on. The revelation was given to Muhammad in Arabic. Are you sure? Well, if we go to the Quran, the Quran confirmed that this is a pure Arabic. But the fact, if we read the Quran, we will find there's hundreds of words are not Arabic. As an example, in Jeel, how the revelation is given in in Jeel language. What in Jeel? When Muhammad was saying the word in Jeel to the Arab, what what the what the Arab will understand from the word in Jeel? What the Arab will understand from the word Torah? Nothing. What the word the Arab will understand from the word Qalam. Qalam is not an Arabic. Tabut is not an Arabic. Everything not Arabic. Even the word Quran is not Arabic. This is Aramaic. Even the Muslim when he pray, he finishes the prayer saying Amin. This is not Arabic. This is Aramaic. If you ask a Muslim about every chapter in the Quran, and we did that maybe before, like the Quran says Ishaq, Ishaq, which means Isaac. What Isaac means? I don't know. Remember, those are not names. You see, there's many naive people, even who do, they are Christians, do not know that those are not names in the Bible. In the Bible, there's no names. There's no names. Even Adam is not a name of a person. All uh, what we call them names, and I quote here, is not names. They are description of people. Ishmael is not a name. Israel is not a name. 
Isaac is not a name. Even Abraham is not a name. Is the description of such a situation. So Abraham is the one who crossed the river. Is not the name of a person. His name is Ibrahim. You ask the Muslim what Ibrahim means. Didn't know. What is Ibrahim? Mean? Didn't know. What is Jibril? The Muslim they keep saying to you the angel Jibril. The angel Jibril. Who? What Jibril mean? Didn't know. Who is Jibril? Didn't know. I mean, have you ever heard of a religion? They have an angel, but none of those followers, they know what the name mean. Yes, they don't know. Because simply, this is not an Arabic word. This is a word starting from the Hebrew. And the Muslims, they have no idea what it does mean. And they think that this is a name. This is not a name. This is not a name. This is a description of somebody who do something belong to the God ear. Same as Ishmael, same as Israel, same, same, same as you know, like all, all. If you read, there is there is a video in uh, in YouTube. You can go and search it. It's called uh, "Secret Coding in the Book of Genesis," Genesis five. And if you go there, you will see that in this video, there is an older brother of ours. Uh, he is describing the names or telling us about the names of the children of Adam. All the children of Adam, including the name of Adam, is not names. They are description of something. Not a single one of them is a name. Yes, they are called by that as a name, true, but in fact, they are not a name. So all of us, we say Adam, but the fact the Bible says that God created Adam and he meant in that when he said that even Eve Adam is a human human being man later became a man or meant to be a man later but even uh, even Eve was described as Adam so the Muslims, because they are copying names, Jibra'il, Mika'il, Ezra'il, Israfil, all those names, Il, 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 not even one Muslim can tell us who is this Il, who is at the end of every name. Simply because this is our names stolen from different religion, from different mythology, from different belief, inserted in the Quran, inserted into Islam, and now because those Muslims are Arab, Bedouin, they have no education. They don't know what those names mean. You remember we asked the Muslims many times. Okay, the Quran keeps saying Israel. Who is Israel? I challenge any Muslim to show me one verse in the Quran telling me who is Israel. I want to know. There's no answer. Always, when you ask a Muslim a question, you will find he is suffering from issues and the, the very simple issue he suffers from he do not know what to say who is israel if i type right now the word israel in the quran have you ever heard of a book let's say you are writing a novel a story fiction story whatever you want and then you say to me the children of israel the children of israel or you mentioned to me the name of Israel. And in your book, that name, as we see in the search here, appeared 41 times. In 41 verses. Shouldn't you tell me first who is Israel? How stupid it is to speak about a name, repeating that name over, 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 and you never say to me, who is this person? I am reading the Quran right now in the front of me. And then suddenly in chapter 2, verse number 40, it says to me, Oh, children of Israel, shouldn't I know who is this guy, Israel? What do you mean, children of Israel? Who is this guy? So you call a nation by a name of a man. His name is Israel, but you don't introduce to me ever who is this guy. How stupid that is. The answer is very simple. 
Muhammad and Islam is both or a theft from other religion. Muhammad, his name is not true. There's no such a person, his name is Muhammad. There's a person, his name is Qatham. He wanted people to worship him as they worship Jesus. He claimed to be the praised one. And this is what his name means. So he changed his name from Qatham to Muhammad. Ask yourself, the Muslim, they say to us all over the internet, you will find thousands of articles written about the monotheism religion, which is Islam. If Islam is a religion of monotheism, how Muhammad, his name is Muhammad. Because Muhammad means the praised one. How he's a person, he's a man like us, and his name is the praised one. Who is the one is praising Muhammad? As I know, in religious meaning, the only one is praised is God. You see, the Christian they say praise Jesus, for they believe in him as God, but they don't praise any other prophet so when you say Muhammad is the praised one you just agree that Muhammad is God and not only God he is the praised one there's no others so who is Allah who is the praised to so yeah Bani Israel okay oh children of Israel who is Israel nobody knows and the same for tons of names in the Quran Yet they say to you that the Quran is a revelation in Arabic, but there's no Arabic there. According to many studies, Quran was not and never been in Arabic. What we see in front of us today is kind of a translation. You see, if you go in the Middle East as we speak now, in the church which I used to go to when I was there, you will see the Christians when they start reading the Bible, they say, Qira'a. Qira'a mean kitab. Reading, which means recitation from a book. In the Aramaic churches, they say, Qira'a. That is the Quran. So this is Qira'a from the book. If you remember before we mentioned to you that Waraka was translating from the Arabic gospel from sorry from the Aramaic gospel or the Hebrew whatever it is to Arabic so Muhammad there's no question that he have in his time a version of an Arabic translated or let us say summarized version of the Bible but this is the Bible of the Nasara not the Christians you remember the story uh, of Muhammad trying to commit suicide before why because Waraka he died and because he died the inspiration of God stopped this is the story here in front of us about what happened to Muhammad when he went to the cave all this uh, fiction story and then you will see the first one Muhammad was introduced to with the first message he been delivered it was Waraka why Waraka nobody will answer Waraka is a Nasara if the Nasara are lost how Muhammad himself will be guided to be taught, to be told that you are a prophet by somebody from the Nasara. And as we know, the Nasara are never been a Christian. Those are like Jehovah's Witnesses. Actually, today I saw them in my way, but you know, I have no time and they don't even speak English, those Jehovah's Witnesses, so I could not talk to them. So Waraka is the one who told Muhammad what you have seen. Muhammad, he described to him what he's seen. Waraka, he said, oh, okay, this is the same as the Namos. This is I.E. Jibreel. So the first time Muhammad introduced to the name Jibreel was from this guy. This is the guy who built Islam. How Waraka knew that this is Jibreel? 
if you ask the Muslim, they will say to you, Allah have thousands of angels, even the Quran says so. So how we know that this is Jibreel? How this guy, imagine the guy who delivered the verses, do not know who is this guy, and the guy who is a cousin of the cousin of the cousin, according to the story, he is the one who knows that this must be Jibreel. And he told him, this is the angel who keep the secrets. What secrets? Are you, are you like, is that a joke? Allah have secrets? I mean, who can steal information from Allah? <laughs> you see, if I say that I have secrets, you know, if, if somebody is uh, like uh, doing meditation and he's like making poetry about God, say you are the one who owns all the secrets, I accept that. Like it's like saying to me, he knows all our secrets, but he keep the secret. What does that mean? And Jibreel is the one who keep the secret. Keep it from who? I mean, if there's anybody can steal information from Allah, uh, Allah server will be hacked by the Russian. Hmm? Let us explain the Russian. So as you see here, all the story is funny and is stupid and full of madness, and nobody can explain to us what's happening. Then you will notice it says introducing to us waraka that he used to write of the gospel in arabic as much as allah wished him to write okay anyone ask the muslims muhammad here according to the story muhammad he have first hand access to the gospel in arabic what is that gospel you know what i mean what what happened to this gospel as long you muslims admit that he have access to the gospel in Arabic. And nowhere did Muhammad say to uh, Waraka, your gospel is false. Did Muhammad ever say that? Even Muhammad, he promised, he told his followers, uh, Waraka, he will be in, in, in heaven. So it's a proven from their books that Muhammad, he had between his hands a copy of what it's called the gospel in arabic which is a false gospel have nothing to do with our gospel as we know so muhammad is not what the muslims claim that he was illiterate he was not a person was not introduced to christianity or judaism he was introduced but to the wrong christianity to a cult it's called nasara you will see here that this guy, his name, Waraka ibn Asad ibn, uh, ibn Abdul Uzza ibn Khusay. So all of them, they belong to one father, which means uh, Waraka and Muhammad. They belong to one family. However, I believe strongly that Waraka, Waraka is an old man, not like Muhammad. Waraka is the true father of Muhammad. You can go and read tons of reference. If you read Islamic books, you will find that Waraka is involved in all the life of Muhammad since his childhood. There's a very important story where Muhammad was lost. His people, they thought he, he thought he's kidnapped. People, they thought he is um, he die in the desert. They, they found him with Waraka. Always you find Muhammad with Waraka. And actually the story in front of us confirmed that Waraka must be the father of Muhammad. Why? When Waraka he died, Muhammad he tried to commit suicide. If you read here with me, it says, But after a few days, Waraka died, and the divine inspiration was also posed for a while. And the Prophet becomes so sad, as we have heard, he intended several times to throw himself from the top of the high mountains. Connect the dots. Inspiration stopped. Why? I mean, Waraka is a guy. Who is, who is this guy? He's not even a Muslim, supposedly. He's a, just a Nasara. Why the inspiration of God stopped? Simply because the guy died. For he is the source of inspiration. After Waraka died, Muhammad did not know what to do. This is his father, the one who take care of him. Try to introduce him as a messenger. And now he announced himself as a messenger. But the one who tell him what to do is dead. His father. Muhammad here is in a trouble. He tried to commit suicide many times, as you see in the front of you. And this is Islamic source. This is not my story. 
why in the world the prophet of God would try to commit suicide there is one of two options either he is mentally ill or he is out of hope desperate he lost everything he was gambling in something and he lost it so what he was gambling with he was gambling that he will be a prophet he will announce himself as a messenger and he have a teacher this is his father his father wanted to spread the cult of Nasara, which believed that Jesus is a person who did not die. There's many things they shared exactly with Muhammad, but Muhammad, he did some change from Nasara a little bit. So here Muhammad, he tried to commit suicide, but then Muhammad, obviously, he got his hand on what it's called the gospel in Arabic. As you see it here, this gospel was in the house of Muhammad and Khadija. She and Muhammad they have a very easy access to the house of this man. They got the gospel, but this gospel is not our gospel. This is a fabricated gospel. It's called the Quran. This is the Arabic gospel, the Quran, written by this man, a fabricator. Who belong to a cult, it's called Nasara. We can go more deep in details, but I am just trying to connect the dots of many things so you can have an image or more clear image of this stupid cult. So we have a person who don't agree with his God about how many Quran is enough for the Muslims as you see here and then he correct his God and he make his God agree that his people are not capable of doing it which means to be Muslims because remember the point of sending the Quran is to make people Muslims but my people are not capable of doing it if you have only one Quran so Muhammad, he requested the second Quran, the third Quran, fourth Quran, as you see here in the funny story. And Allah agree with him each time after he says to him, okay, well, one is not enough, no problem. I will make you recite two. My people are not capable of doing it. Then second time Jibreel came and he said to him, okay, recite the Quran in two dialect. Upon this, Muhammad, he said, okay, I seek burden of forgiveness. My people are not capable of doing it. Then he send him, uh, it says, uh, okay, make it, uh, I will send you three Quran, then four, then, you know, etc. until it became seven. In the other hadith, we showed you how Moses is even correcting Allah that 50 prayer is not logical and you should make it less and less and less, which means the one who agree about the number five, it was Moses. And here we need to ask ourselves, more questions about this story who is Moses and how Moses can correct Allah and Muhammad both of them and why Muhammad did not think about it and why Allah did not make the right decision of giving five prayer from the beginning and why Allah in the Quran says pray three prayers if you go in the Quran the Quran say clearly that you pray only three you know prayers so what is five prayers about As you see the verse in front of you, it's saying, you know, uh, uh, do the prayer at the two end of the day and in when the night approach. That's three prayer. That's it. Chapter eleven, verse number one fourteen. So why Allah in the Quran He said three, then in the Hadith we arrived to fifty, and the fifty became five. You see, it? that's it. This is what the Quran is saying. So when when we say Islam is the most stupid cult, I am not insulting. I am not exaggerating. The problem is that people don't have knowledge and they speak of something they do not know. This is why I advise you all of you, if you want to learn really more about Islam, go to Amazon.com, type my name, Christian Prince, and Amazon.com, and you will find the list of my books in many languages. 
Choose the one fit with you. We don't insult. But it's obvious when you say the truth, it's an insult. For people decided to be stupid and these days to be ignorant is to be cool. To be stupid, they call you open-minded. To be a donkey, they call you a horse. I mean, everything is in, in this world today, everything like it's like everybody have a tag, but the tag in the wrong person. They switch the tag of the elephant, they put it in the giraffe, and the giraffe became a mice, and the mice became a turtle, and the turtle became a lion, and the rabbit became an angel. We, like there's no truth around you, so you have to search for it and you have to be smart. Don't take what people say to you, like whatever I say to you, as you see, I'm showing you in the screen exactly what I'm reading. We need to have a revolution in the way of thinking. You and your family and everything around you, even the Christians, when you read our Bible, stop reading the Bible in the, in the traditional way. You see, the Bible is an amazing book. It's not meant to be a traditional book of tradition. This is what the Jewish do. We Christians, we are followers of a revolutionary God. Why we call him a revolutionary God? Because he is revolutionary in everything. Love your enemy. Have you ever heard anyone saying to you, love your enemy? That is extreme, but extreme in the right direction. If somebody asks you, you're called, give him your dress. If somebody asks you, you're, you know, to walk when he wants to step, walk with him 1,000. I was hungry and you feeded me. So he is a revolutionary God with everything. Love, giving, be human, be loving, be, be amazing, be God. Somebody will say to me, oh, Christians, they believe that they, are, they can be God. No, God, he ordered us to be holy like him. So we, he asked for very high standard because he knew that if he don't do so, we will settle with the little. A human being is lazy. So he asked us to be holy like him. So our goal will be high and whatever we reach, still we need to reach more. And that for the benefit of mankind. In the case of Muhammad, he have no goal except sex in heaven, 70 version for every Muslim at least. Naked boys going around you, what is the goal? Worship Allah, serve Allah. Allah, you ask a Muslim why we are created, they say to you, to worship Allah. What, what the heck? What, what's wrong with this God? So he created us just to have a fun game that he saw people bowing down. Is that his lonely God? He's lonely, he is sick, he have a mental issue. Why Allah created heaven? For those who worship him, deserve to go to heaven. Okay, hold on. I deserve go to go to heaven because I worship him. All right, I, I have no problem with that. What about all the virgins I'm going to have sex with? What is their problem? There's no problem. Allah created them for you. I mean, what is justice? If in heaven there's no justice, so do you like you to be created for me? In case you are slow, you don't understand what I'm saying. And I'm talking to the Muslims here. Imagine you have a religion. It says that the Muslims are created for fun for the Hindus. What does that mean? It's mean in the heaven, all the Muslims will be servant for the Hindus. Do you like that? He will say, no way, Allah Akbar, I don't accept that. So how you accept that God, he will give you tons of thousands of females and boys for sex and serving. How, you, how come you accept that? And there, what justice and what justifies such a gift which is nothing but a slavery. There's a slavery in earth and there's slavery in heaven in Islam. Islam approves slavery in earth. Islam prove to you that Allah, he loves slavery even in heaven. Slavery of women and boys. How many boys I will have in heaven? Some they say 300, some they say 80,000. They say there is ranks in heaven. Each depend on your rank. If you are a Samuel Laden, you will have a lot. And the Muslims, they have many ideas about those boys. Some of them, they believe that those boys are the boys of the Christians. 
I mean, what is justice? If I have a child, Allah will make him your servant for eternity. What he did, he's a child. Madness, sickness. So the standard of Islam, the goal of Islam is all about sexuality. This is why the boys are white and pretty and the women are jellyfish. You can even see through their bones. And the promises here is explaining to us something very important that Muhammad, God, is the God of the Arab. Why? Because the Arab, they like white women. As simple as that. This is their culture. This is their. This is how they are. They like, you know, very blonde women, white specifically. The more white the woman she is, more wanted. So Muhammad, because he have the mentality of the Arab, and he is an Arab, he promised them women. You will see through their bones, to the point he said they are transparent. Imagine you see transparent women. I mean, this is sick. Your wife is a jellyfish. To the point even he promised them, he's going extreme with his stupidity, saying you will see the marrows of their bones. So how I can accept such a cult to be my goal? So why I'm worshiping Allah? To go to heaven and have boys who will serve me, as the Quran described them, white like pearls, and they are very pretty, and they will not bleed. And he will give me a lot of versions to have sex with, and they are like a jellyfish I can see through their bones. This is the goal of a Muslim. The goal of a Christian is to be happy with God. That's it. He have a noble happiness, mighty happiness, spiritual happiness. The Abdul, he want to go to heaven to eat birds, barbecued, and have sex, and Allah will make his penis endless as Muhammad promised him in the hadith. And actually those promises is enough to prove to us that Muhammad must be a crazy man and his followers are really being sick to believe in that. Imagine your wife next to you, but your penis is in China. What do you do? Your penis take a U-turn and come back? I mean, what's the point of promising people in this penis? Unless you are sick, mentally sick. Size does matter in Islam. This is why Allah is Akbar. Many people, they lie to you. They say the word Akbar mean greater. The fact the word Akbar mean bigger. Allah Akbar. So everything around us is not telling the truth about Islam. All the article you see, the politics, the politician, the, the presidents, the leaders, they lie. Nobody want to say that this is a sick religion based on violence and sex. If you want to read more about sexuality in Islam, I advise you to get my last book, which is it's two volume. It's called Sex and Allah. And you will hear stories you never heard of your life. And you will never hear in your lifetime. And actually, I try to make the two volumes small because if I want to speak about everything sexual in Islam, it's going to take me the rest of my life. This religion, all of it is about sex. Everything there is about sex. Allah, Muhammad, the Quran, the Hadith, there's no topic except sex. What Muslims they share together as a goal? Sex. What the Christians share together as goal, love. And there's a huge difference. You see, if you read the Quran, you will see when Allah, he promised the Muslims, the virgins, he's talking about women you never met. There is no love. A woman I never met, she never saw me. She is a created just for my sexual desire. And here, actually, I want to mention something. The Muslims, they copy a story from the Gospel, from the Old Testament too, about Adam and Eve. And Eve. Okay, why God, he created Adam and Eve? Why he did not create Adam and Eve? You know what I mean? Why in the beginning of mankind, Allah created, according to the story of Muslims, one Eve and one Adam. Then at the end, Allah will give every one of us endless number of women. Doesn't make sense. The reason for that, Muhammad is copying a story of one Adam, one Eve of others. So the beginning of the story is not his story. The end of the story is his end. You know what I'm saying? So he copied the beginning of the story of Adam from other books. That's why it's one Adam, one Eve. 
But then when he ended, he added eaves. So each one of us will have 80,000 eaves, and all of them, they look like one woman, and they have one voice. They sing one song. They have one eyes, one skin, one hair, one height, and all of them, their name is Hur. I mean, how stupid that is. Imagine you go to a website of dating. Everybody in the website, she have one image. All women there have one image, one name, one age, and one height, and one skin color, and one hair color, and they say the same profile. How stupid that is, and how boring. So if you step with one of them, as you step with all, oh, so what's the point of the 80,000? And all the Muslim men, by the way, in case you don't, you don't know, all the Muslim men in the heaven of Allah, they will be 33 years old, they will have one the same voice, they will have the same height, they will have the same age, the same color, all of them, I mean, what the point? They will look exactly like Joseph, and they will have the age of Jesus. So imagine there's a website, there's two profile, one male and one female, and all the rest of the females have one profile, the same, exactly the same image, the same age, the same height, the same description, and all the males, their name is Joseph, and they have the age of Jesus, and they have the face and the look of Joseph. This is Islam. And if you read more, actually, if you go to my book, you will see as an example a story like here in front of us, where Hawa, she was giving birth, but her babies die. So what then? She gave her son, her first son, the name of Al-Harith. And this is her first son. Like what? Who is Al-Harith? Al-Harith is the name of the shaitan. This is why I'm saying, if you read my books, my friend, you will learn a lot. And I encourage people to learn and educate yourself because education change you. Education is amazing. You will not be the same person no more after there, there's there is a huge difference between you as an ignorant and you as educated. You cannot compare. People they will love listening to you. People they will respect you, and people will gather around you as if you are a fireplace in the Christmas day. Because people they are thirsty for knowledge, knowledge they never heard before, and something truthful. Don't be stupid who say things mean nothing, as everybody copy and paste. Be a different person. Be you with your knowledge, the knowledge which you earn by your hard work and reading and qualifying yourself to be something bigger than just a number in a social security or an ID. All of us, we have names, but there's names will be called by God and there's names will be forget, for, forgotten. So be one to be remembered and don't be the ignorant fool who people they can play with you and play with your mind. I want to say thank you guys for listening. May the Lord bless you. And I will do broadcasting again. I will try to do it tomorrow. If not, maybe Monday. So until then, I say to you, may the Lord bless you. If you like to support us in what we do, there's a link down in the info for donation. And you can get my books from Amazon.com. And may the Lord bless you all. Christ is Lord, Islam is false, and see you soon again. Bye-bye.